Okay, so welcome everybody to this event today. Um, this is one of our events in the, in the framework of this event series called Jumpstart Your Career in Estonia. And today we focus on, on volunteering. Uh, my name is Mart Peliste. Um, I work for the Institute of Baltic Studies. Um, and I'm here with my colleagues, uh, Christina and Maria, who you can also see on the screen, um, who helped to co-organize uh, this event uh, today. Uh, so I'll, I'll first say a few words of introduction. And then, of course, we will get uh, get to our our speakers. So this is the fifteenth event that we have organized. Um, so we've had this project for the past uh, year and a half, or nearly two years. Um, and this is actually one of the last event we'll be organizing. It's been a quite an interesting journey for us as well uh, to link these events um, to interning COVID times, uh, doing them virtually in hybrid formats and physically. But it's it's happy, or I'm happy to see that we've done a full circle in the sense that when we began, we had our first event in, in 2020, uh, December, which was also on volunteering. And one of our speakers today, uh, Victoria from from uh, uh, from Sydamitusoyus, was also there uh, back then. So uh, it's nice that we've come full circle and, and we, we we conclude this event series with another one on volunteering. Uh, but this time, taking a bit look. On, on summer opportunities and at volunteering in, in large festivals. So uh, the project that has been enabling this uh, event series is funded by uh, the European Union uh, through a specific uh, fund they have for activities like this. So it's called the Asylum Migration Integration Fund. And then the Estonian Ministry of Interior has also been supporting the activities uh, and has already you know, introduced uh, all these events and trainings have been conducted by the Institute of Baltic Studies, uh, which is a non-profit uh, think tank uh, based in Tartu, Estonia. So today um, we will be uh, going through basically three presentations. So after I have concluded uh, my presentation, uh, we will have three speakers uh, representing various organizations and opportunities to volunteer uh, for them. And so we have Bob Uspensky from Illiku Island, uh, Pop, you can turn on your camera for a second and, and say hi. Um, hi. Then, uh, thank you, Bob. Then we have Vilja de Polk, represented by Silja. Hello, Silja. Thank you for being with us. Hello. And then, last but not least, Victoria from Warmth of Parts. Good morning, everyone. And uh, and then later on, a colleague of, of Silja, uh, sorry, from Victoria, will also join us as well. And then we have some closing remarks. So it's pretty uh, simple, straightforward structure that we have uh, today. Um, a few words about volunteering, because sometimes um, what the concept means might have a different meaning in different countries, different cultures. Uh, it can also be confused with other forms of activities. So just in a quick glance of what, what volunteering means in Estonia is that uh, you offer your time, your energy, your skills, uh, for something that is dear to your heart. So let's say if you are if you like animals, you might volunteer in an animal shelter to take care of the, the animals there. Uh, if you care about children, there are different organizations where you can work with children. Um, and if, if you like festivals, you can often join festivals to, to help them run the, uh, run the events smoothly. So various different things. And usually people, people volunteer in organizations that are you know linked with their own interests uh, or hobbies um, and so on. Um, so the idea is really to, to to sort of spend a bit of your free time for the greater good and society. Uh, in Estonia, volunteering is not really regulated in the sense that you don't need to sign a contract if you volunteer, um, and most frequently it's done in non-profit associations, um, so not not in enterprises as such. Um, now it's still also what we we have seen in our own studies that we've conducted in the Baltic studies. And also in, in these different events we've organized is that volunteering as such can also have multiple benefits uh, for foreign students uh, in Estonia. Uh, so they help you build your network in Estonia. Well, often we know that uh, foreign students can end up in silos where they only interact with other foreign students and do not really get to meet Estonians. Then um, you know joining a team of a nonprofit that usually has a lot of Estonian speakers in there. Um, is a good opportunity to just to get to know the local culture and customs better and to make some local friends 
but also um, it can open up new new possibilities. So you might meet new people that will lead you to new volunteering opportunities, or um, instead you might find uh, some sort of a easier access to the labor market. Uh, because again, we've heard that sometimes foreign students struggle to sort of get their foot in to to introduce themselves to employers. Uh, you know, if you work, if you volunteer together with a bunch of other people, then maybe one of them is working somewhere, or, or maybe they're even the the employer themselves. So, so these are sort of the benefits what, what volunteering also has, besides, of course, the main essence of doing something uh, for for the greater good in that in that sense. Um, so this is this is sort of the main intro on volunteering. Um, but I would like to also launch a poll uh, with you. So I will stop sharing my screen for a second just to see from the audience. Uh, how you see volunteering. So you should be able to see the poll now on your on your screen, and we're curious uh, whether you have volunteered in Estonia already. So there are like four four choices, um, and, and let's see. I'll give you a few few seconds to to, to provide your answers. Also, while you are um, filling in the poll. Uh, I also want to thank, of course, all the participants for joining us today. Uh, I know the weather today is quite nice and uh, you are probably in, in a very busy exam season or, or maybe you have already defended your thesis. So there are different, different probably interesting activities that could spark uh, your interest, but we're, we're glad to have you here and, and that you are also interested in volunteering. So now I will end the poll and, and you will be able to see, see the results. So basically, uh we have we have the, the main sort of important target group here with us today because we have people who have not yet volunteered uh would love would, would love to and some who have some uh, prior experience so that is excellent so now i will just wrap up my own presentation with uh, one more slide about the rules of the game so you have probably already seen that uh, we are recording the session, so just you have been then uh, you have been notified of that fact, and then then so the recording will be made available afterwards. Um, all the questions, uh, so we encourage we encourage you to ask a lot of questions from the speakers. Uh, we we do it in a way that after each presentation, you will have a chance to ask questions, and you can either use the chat function of Zoom uh, to do that. Or you can also, uh, during that moment, then turn on your camera and, and a microphone to ask uh, the question directly uh, from the speaker. So uh, it will be moderated. I will moderate uh, the Q and A session, but just so you know that uh, this is your chance to ask directly uh, anything that might interest you. Um, and then I hope you make good use of that opportunity. And uh, you can also keep an eye on the chat because my colleague Christina, our very co moderator, could also be sharing some useful links uh, throughout the event in the chat. So, so this is where I will actually stop. And I would like to invite our first speaker, Bob, uh, to turn on your camera and microphone um, and tell us about the uh, islet that you're working on and what type of uh sort of volunteering opportunity uh you you have yes my pleasure uh, we have uh, this uh it's not an island it's an islet like a peninsula uh we've been uh, doing different events here and uh, coordinating a lot of community work uh, since uh, 2008 but uh, from 2017 we got the islet uh uh, we signed a contract for 35 years uh, to basically build this up and uh, and we have here a lot of space a lot of buildings a lot of uh, a lot of green area and a harbor and uh, and um, since 2017 uh, we have been doing here a festival Island Sound Festival. Uh, this is this is how we made this uh, island uh, famous. And now it's uh, we kind of feel that this uh, the, this uh, islet is even more 
it's it's even bigger than the festival itself because uh, um, we have been building this thanks to a lot of volunteers thanks to the community thanks to the festival uh, to the point that now it's uh, it's kind of giving back we still have a lot of work to do uh, a lot of uh, buildings to renovate and uh, uh, a lot of projects going on at the moment and uh, coming ahead but uh, volunteering and internship has been a major part uh, in this uh, yeah, on this journey from uh, 2017 uh, we shouted out or uh, we, we invited about 50 volunteers to festival and it grew uh, to 150 uh, in 2019 when we had 5,000 guests um, uh, 2020 we had to skip festival because of the situation in the world and 2021 was also kind of uh, unknown what's gonna happen um, and uh, we didn't uh, uh, we didn't ask for volunteering, but a lot of people came to help, even uh, people who had already bought tickets. So uh, um, um, I didn't uh, make any presentation uh, why mm, to give any numbers because uh, why people come to help us and why people enjoy being here, it's, uh, it's a feeling thing. You need to come here to uh, smell that uh, uh, fr fresh air to, to get a sense of uh, uh, what are you doing and where are you going. But uh, um, like I said, festival is one thing and uh, illiquid is uh, another thing. Uh, with the festival, we have been uh, using uh, or asking up to 150 people's help. We we offer them accommodation, uh, different type of accommodation in uh, tents uh, or in a um, schoolhouse. Mm, or, or whatsoever, where people are happy to, uh, to sleep. Uh, we need help before the festival, during the festival, and after the festival. Uh, there's uh, a lot of things you can help us out. We, we've been asking always, what are your superpowers? How would you, how would you perform your best? So we know how to, um, how to use people uh, the best way or how they can be the most happy uh, from building to helping out in the kitchen and uh, we offer uh, accommodation uh, food uh, food and beverages and drinks during that period where they are here also the festival ticket and uh, and transportation costs we also cover and um, we have, we kind of, uh, everybody's like looking out who is, who is very independent and also people come, we kind of notice who want to stay for longer and who, who are very uh, uh, productive, uh, then uh, we are happy actually to also um, uh, pay them if they want to stay for longer. Uh, we we've had like a, uh, like a rule at that uh, 24 hours is usually needed to help three times eight hours uh, and uh, from 2017 to 19 we also made uh, months before the festival we made we made kind of uh, like uh, those um, talgut like let's do it to, uh, kind of work days all day uh, we uh, we people came together and we did uh, we did community work for the uh, illiquid or 
or uh, outside of it. And uh, you needed to visit us three times, then you will get the uh, festival ticket. Uh, because a lot of people couldn't uh, help us uh, just days before the festival or didn't want to, um, they wanted to enjoy the festival, just, uh, just uh, dancing and being there, not, not volunteering. So, so we made this uh, possible. We made it possible to mm, come and help out months before the festival, and during that period, we also cover their uh, uh, food cost and uh, sometimes also uh, accommodation cost. But during that period, then not uh, transportation. But we build a community in uh, Island Sound that. Um, there's uh, two Facebook groups where people share transport and also uh, this buy, sell, trade group where it's, the, where it's about 2,000 people and people share information there before, during and after the festival. Mm. But uh, now uh, to the Illico, which, like I said, is growing. Uh, it's growing a bit bigger than Island Sound itself. Um, like I said, we have here harbor. Uh, from last summer, we have a restaurant. Uh, every year, we're uh, doing a lot of um, uh, a lot of like uh, small community. Uh, things, doing some gardening, building new uh, things here, uh, putting, uh, putting more and more uh, plants to the ground. So this, this uh, needs, uh, needs uh, a lot of care. And for this year, we have uh, three volunteers who decided uh, about a month ago that they want to spend summer here and help us out do whatever they can. We've, uh, we know their superpowers and we've uh, asked uh, their uh, manuals, basically. So, uh, uh, and uh, they are using their superpowers here and helping us uh, out with whatever uh, we are needed. Um, and we have here, every week we have this, family meeting with all these uh, people who, who are here, uh, family members. There's about 20, 20 22 of us. And uh, this like one big family because uh, we try to eat together. We try to uh, um, have a lot of conversations together. Also talk about personal uh, problems and, uh, and share personal um, victories. So, um, and we offer here on the island uh, different accommodation possibilities uh, and we help uh, recover costs that people have. So basically the idea is here that uh, you come here, everything for you is free. You get to eat, you get to sleep, yeah, we cover your transport. And if people really, like we see they're independent and working more than asked, then, then we are willing to mm, offer them festival tickets or, uh, or, or, or pay them. Because we have, we have like kind of also the knowledge that uh, uh, volunteering is is uh, is good and productive and uh, uh, un until some uh, some time when uh, pe people kind of like uh, they still have their own personal cost as well. Who has uh, I don't know cat to feed in Tallinn or uh, or grandma to help? So so. People are here open-minded and telling their uh, a lot of their like how's their life 
otherwise besides the Illico. So we kind of try to uh, try to uh, how to say listen to everyone and uh, and uh, build the structure how it's needed for them, and it is like uh, this with everybody. And also we offer uh, interning internship. Uh, we've had through time, through years, uh, a lot of different uh, people. For uh, this year, we have a, uh, um, me, myself, I'm a harbor captain, and I have an internship I had last year and this year, who's, uh, <clears throat> who's just learning what to do in harbor. Also, we have an internship uh, who's um, who's learning uh, just business running, uh, and uh, how to how to run a business. Also, we have a marketing intern, and we have a, uh, how is it called Re recreational um uh, kind of form who's learning how to do events so we have <clears throat> quite many people helping us out they need to do like 260 hours here or something like that and uh, since we're growing every day it's uh, we have a lot of things to do we we still need helping hands uh the longer the better because it takes a bit time to understand uh, uh, how things are working here and, uh, and to get on the train and to feel comfortable here, comfortable enough to make decisions and, uh, and uh, be yourself. So uh, if anybody felt like this is a, a place to be. Since you even haven't seen any pictures, uh, I um, at the moment I can recommend you to Google or go to Instagram, find Iliku Light. Iliku Light, I can write it there. Uh, we have also a website which is uh, at this moment on progress. We're working on it. We got funding, government funding to do it. Uh, best website in Estonia. And um, also islandsound.ee or Island Sound Festival. If you can search uh, from Instagram or Facebook, you will find a lot of pictures there. Um, and also from uh, Island Sound Festival webpage, you can read a bit uh, what we do here. It also directs you to islandgreen.ee website because we are kind of sustainable maniacs here. Uh, we try to do everything as green as possible and leave a, leave a small uh, step footsteps of, of us. And uh, at the moment, uh, a week ago, we made a uh, uh how to say it. we we made a job offering uh public we offered uh, four different jobs so we're kind of looking for uh helping hands who could uh basically do everything uh water our plants uh, help us out with some uh, easy woodworks uh, greet people. Um, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, at the moment, we do have a season from May to all, uh, September. And the, like the tight period is June to August. <clears throat> But um, from this year, we see that uh, our family of local 
um, people uh, who's here all year long, or at least like nine months of the year. It's, it's uh, it has grown quite uh, quite big, and we do have a lot actually beautiful uh, winter and a lot of activities to do. It's just that uh, we haven't uh, we haven't learned to use the winter quite well yet, but we're working on that. And um, we are uh, happy to uh, hear uh, all kind of hello. I would like to come here visit you. Uh, doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter the skin color. We are uh, uh, we are very open minded, and people here are uh, very open minded. We've had. Um, uh, we have a multicultural uh, family. So, um, and also feel free to ask any uh, questions now or uh, later. I can also write, or I will write the email. You can uh, send us any questions. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Bob. And, uh... I mean, I'm convinced <laughs> looking at those nice pictures and this idyllic Estonian summer uh, on, an, on an idyllic island that sounds great. Uh, but yeah, you actually answered my, my main question that I wanted to ask. So how can, how can people get in touch with you? How can they apply either to come as a volunteer or, or um, to do an internship? Uh, so do they just write you uh, an email or is there some other more formalized process? Uh... We, we are eager to also, uh, we're eager to actually meet people, to have a phone call, to hear them. But uh, like the first, um, first thing would be to write us. Uh, like you all already shared the uh, Illico uh, Instagram, you can also share the Illico uh, Facebook. And then there's this, uh, email info at illico.ee either either one of them use them as uh, what, what is the most convenient for you thank you Christina uh, social media or, or email everything goes it's it's important to just have that uh, first hello and then and we also visit now in the during summer we visit Tallinn uh, not that much but um, from uh, September to May we do visit Tallinn also a lot but there's no time actually no no rest here during uh, June to to August yeah thanks Bob um, also I see that we're getting questions so basically the way we're going to do it is that my co-moderator Christina We'll take a few questions from the chat, but you also all have the opportunity uh, to sort of uh, ask them verbally. So for that, you know, in, in Zoom, you have this reaction button where you can raise your yellow hand. So if you do that, we can also give the floor to you to turn on your camera or your microphone and ask directly. Um, but uh, Christina, uh, maybe we have some questions then in the chat that you can start with. Yes, uh, thank you for the great presentation. Uh, is there any limits? How many volunteers are you looking to the islet? Mm, no, I wouldn't say so. Yes, uh, of course, accommodation is uh, kind of a sets a limit, but uh, we are all the time pushing the limit as well. If we have good people who want to help us and want to come here, then we find solutions. So um, this is actually our like major concern or our, our, our this what accommodation boxes us a bit, but uh, the town Orissara, which is next to us, this is growing, and we are finding different solutions and also renting apartments or uh, actually looking forward now to uh, buy a building like uh, to build it as a community building. And uh, we have clamping tents. Uh, we have a boat, a yacht that we're actually like fixing at the moment. We also have 
camper van that we are fixing for accommodation. We already have uh, three people living in two different camper vans, uh, one couple and, uh, and, uh, and, a, and a guy with a dog. So, uh, and it, it, there's like trailer park uh, family there, which is uh, super cool. And uh, during the summer, we have a lot of uh, camper vans visiting us. So this is kind of a separate community already there. But yeah, uh, I wouldn't say a limit. If, if there's uh, good people, uh, I wouldn't say there's too many good people, yeah. Uh, but is there any age limit or do you take everyone? I was impressed. Uh, I needed to ask uh, twice uh, last year. Uh, my mother found a guy who was uh, 13 years old. I didn't believe he looked 13 years old, but he worked or he, he was just thinking and he was independent like a 25 year old. So it depends a lot of the of the personality of the, of how your how's your uh, uh, how's your home how are you uh, uh, how are you taught uh, and um, there's some jobs that you are not allowed uh, to do or we are not allowed to pay uh, if you're 15 but. Uh, after 16 and above, uh, another, another question. But like I said, we had 13 year old who, who basically may, made us, uh, impressed us much more than some older, uh, older people, so. Uh, thank you. Uh, and also since you were talking about the the uh, sleeping opportunities. Uh, does, do the places have electricity and warm water? Yes, we have everything uh, needed for. Uh, we have uh, the rooms have uh, are heated. The, the ones we have at the moment, we have basic new beds there. Uh, there's Wi-Fi. There's uh, there's mm, all kind of electronics you can use. Uh, hot showers, you have sauna, you can uh, wash your laundry, you can dry your laundry. Uh, there's kitchen you can use. Uh, and from Wednesday to Sunday, we have a restaurant open. So we have family breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And also, since we do, we are located, uh, we are around the sea, so we have a lot of uh, on water activities you can use paddleboard, kayaks, uh, you can try windsurfing. Um, you know, and also, there's everybody's playing some kind of instrument here, so we're, we have a kind of like a studio. We have a from this year, we have a chef who brought uh, his drum set, and uh, we have uh, speakers. Uh, we have a, like a nightclub here, so uh, people practice their DJing uh, and uh, different instruments. And uh, we actually had a discussion last week that we should make a band here because everybody plays some kind of instrument and everybody just wants to do that. And um, I, I wouldn't, I can't even like uh, tell what people are missing here. Like we have fixed, we have fixed all the needs that uh, that people have had, or they've said like we need a we need a better couch or uh, we need a fridge here. So we made it all possible, and we have okay Wi-Fi. We have workstations, and we are building an uh, like an open office at the moment. And things are these are the things we have at the moment, but uh, also getting getting better. And for the last question, uh, do you want to talk a little, how do you get to the islet, uh, since uh, I think it's not that easy? From Orissa, you just need to actually take change passes two times, then you can get to Berlin. So we are, we are on the uh, international way. But uh, 
uh, Orissare is located on the biggest island of Saarema. And uh, from Tallinn, there's a um, uh, bus uh, you can take. I don't know how many times it uh, departs uh, a day, to be honest. I think four to five. And uh, you just uh, need to get a ticket to Orissara. It's a two and a half hour drive, including ferry from uh, Birtsu to Kuivastu, which is 27 minutes. And then only half an hour uh, ride to Orissara. So you cross the Muhu Island, and then there's a road across the water, and you don't need to drive to Kuresare. Orisare is just, uh, it's the basically first town uh, on the island. And uh, from there, it's 600 meters to walk to our uh, peninsula. And also you can get uh, to the island, you can get by plane from Tallinn to uh, Kuresare. Uh, which departs, I think, once or twice a day, which is fun and it's not expensive. I think it was like 27 euros or something. And it's a 15 minute uh, flight. And from there, it's a um, 40, 40 minute drive with a bus from Kurasara to Arisara. And also, there's a Facebook uh, community. Uh, Tallinn Kuresara, Tallinn Kuresara Tallinn, which is uh, very popular. I think it's uh, it's also like Tallinn Parno, Tallinn Tartu, uh, or different kind of uh, directions. This is uh, what locals use a lot. So you basically uh, get uh, get company, and you can share a ride, uh, and um, it people usually ask a bit money there, but it's less than bus ticket. And uh, some people are also asking about food. Do you also have vegan uh, options? Of course, we have vegan options, yeah. This is, uh, uh, how to say, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's rare now uh, not, not to have vegan options. Uh, and we also have like a very cool uh, local farmers here nearby grow different uh, kind of uh, vegetables. We have a local fisherman who bring who's bringing fish, and also you can fish yourself. Um, and yeah, we do have a uh, we do have a chef here who also loves vegan food and he loves uh, she loves a lot of Asian food so we have very many different Asian vegan uh, dishes she serves us uh, and also our local shop offers quite a lot of uh, vegan stuff now because of the need so great Bob I mean it's, it's wonderful to hear about uh, you know everything to do being inclusive being vegan friendly um, a lot of you know Tailor made in the sense that whatever the person can offer and how much time they can contribute, and it's very flexible. So you're you're willing to talk to everybody who's interested in, in your community. Um, so as my colleague Christina has been putting all these contacts in, in in the chat, then that is your gateway to to get in contact with Bob and and, and his team. And we'll also share the the links later on uh, to all the people who are attending today via email as well. So uh, thank you very much, Bob. Um, I wish you all the best with with your uh, with your island and with with your uh, with your festival as well. Yes, I'm just checking the all the participants here. If uh, just if everybody should write me uh, tomorrow, then please, uh, uh, I'm not capable of answering you tomorrow. But if you really want to uh, write me, say hello. Also, add your superpowers and what do you want to do and what you're good at. Uh, so. We have like as much information about you and what you need and what you eat and so on. So, it, so it's much better for us to like uh, pick you quickly if you really want to come here. And since we have like uh, one and a half months to, to the festival, it's uh, uh, a busy period at the moment, but we still 
uh, summer is ahead, so uh, we have to have opportunities to bring in here more people. And if not to help uh, all summer long, then maybe uh, a week or two or a month or so. So yeah, um, we are open uh, for everything and everybody. Just write us. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And so uh, moving on uh, to our next presenter, Celia, who, who will be talking about the Viljandi Folk Festival. Festivals. So it's an annual folk music festival held in the city of Viljandi, um, roughly an hour's drive from Tartu. And uh, please, Celia, go ahead. Tell us about Viljandi Folk. Thank, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'll try to share my presentation first. Well, okay. So, um, uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar. Uh, I hope uh, you'll get some uh, new information about our festival and the opportunities that we have uh, uh, to offer to our volunteers. So, um, so first of all, Viljandi Folk Music play, uh, Festival takes place uh, in Viljandi, uh, in the center of uh, Viljandi. And um, this festival has got a, quite a long uh, tradition. The first uh, year that something was organized was already back in 1993, uh, when the students uh, were organizing just one concert. A uh, few hundred people came to listen to the concert and uh, everybody, like I mean organizers and the musicians, they were very inspired uh, of it and they decided to organize it next year again. And uh, already after a few years, uh, this festival, uh, this one concert grew into a festival uh, that took place uh, for four days in a row. So uh, now this year we ha already have the 29th of uh, Viljandi Folk Music Festival and uh, this festival takes place at the end of uh, July, always from uh, Thursday to Sunday. And uh, nowadays we have uh, for an audience uh, more than 25,000 people. Uh, of course, it depends on the year. These uh, past few years, uh, due to Corona, it has been uh, uh, tricky with a uh, with a, with the audience. Uh, but um, but last year we managed to organize uh, quite a major uh, festival. Uh, but 2020, we were not able to have a festival, but we had small concert days instead of that. Uh, and over here, um, I just uh, wrote out how many volunteers are we uh, using each year for different uh, tasks that, um, that are required um, over all the whole festival. And as you can see, the numbers are quite different uh, each year. Uh, and I think this year it is something in between 150 and 200 uh, volunteers that we uh, do require. And um, so how to become a volunteer at our festival? Um, uh, as, as we need quite many volunteers, then we have made it uh, easier for the applicant and easier for ourselves as well. Uh, we have um, uh, made a form to fill in uh, where we ask uh, who are you, where, what are your interests, what are your experiences, uh, what do you want to do at our festival, uh, how much time do you have and so on. And um, according to this information, I will be the one uh, deciding uh, which uh, voluntary position to offer you. And, uh, and when we agree on that, then voila, you are a volunteer. So at the moment, uh, I'm in the process of uh, uh, reading through all the applications and also uh, deciding uh, in which team each uh, applicant uh, should uh, go 
and um, and also uh, we are still looking for uh, more people so whoever is interested it's a uh, perfect time to apply and um, hopefully in the middle of june uh, i'm ready with uh, teams and after that uh, we can already start working with a team uh, we have a pre-meeting in uh, like beginning of july or mid-july uh, usually we do it online so that everybody can attend uh, you don't have to travel for that uh, separately and uh, the further meetings and further uh, uh, like briefings are uh, with your team uh, leaders and uh, these usually take place the day before the festival so that means last week of july on wednesdays and um so uh, what do we uh, what do we expect uh, from a volunteer um, we are working well, like most teams are working uh, based on a, uh, on a rota or a, a, sh a sh <laughs> schedule and um, that gives uh, flexibility to to have your free time and have your working time uh, like you know like which concerts can you go on that day and which concerts during which concerts are you working for example and uh, we have uh, tried to keep it uh, around six hours per day uh, it's the working time and rest of the time it's your it's your free time to enjoy the festival or to meet your friends or whatever you decide to do and uh, the periods when we need volunteers are a bit different as well. Uh, like most of the volunteers we need uh, throughout the festival for the four days, uh, plus the introduction day on Wednesday. Uh, but there are some teams that are uh, starting from uh, already from beginning of the week. And there are some teams who are starting already in July, but these are I would say these are more e exceptional. And um, here, over here, you can see the list of the teams that we have uh, on the festival. Um, uh, as today's uh, webinar is uh, focused on, uh, on people whose uh, native language is not uh, Estonian, then uh, I marked in bold the teams where uh, we have tried uh, to have foreign volunteers who do not speak Estonian or do not speak Estonian very well. And in these teams, uh, it has been working out good. We have tried in other teams as well, but uh, it hasn't worked out uh, that great as we had uh, hoped. So these are the, like, the best opportunities to, to become uh, a volunteer. Uh, but of course, I mean, uh, uh, if you do speak Estonian, then your options are much uh, wider. Uh, as we have lots of uh, audience, uh, lots of uh, team members, and uh, th then it is, uh, I mean, of course, we try to be uh, very flexible and understanding. Uh, but still, um, in some on some positions, it is required to speak Estonian to understand uh, understand the issues that uh, that the ticket owners are uh, coming with, and and so on. Um, oh yeah, uh, just a little bit about the, the teams uh, more. Um, probably the position of a guard is, uh, is easy to understand, but what does this field uh, maintenance team do? Um, as the previous um, uh, presenter was uh, saying, uh, then uh, that uh, they pay much attention to sustainability, and then uh, uh, we do that as well. Uh, so uh, behind this field maintenance team, we actually have uh, four, uh, four different uh, teams that focus on, on different uh, things. 
Um, uh, first of all, there is a team that uh, uh, that looks after the concert venues, or you know, like the outdoor, outdoor concert venues as well. Like when the concert finishes, you make sure that the ground is uh, clean. There's no litter around. If there are some problems, then uh, then uh, you should uh, deal with that. Uh, then we also use this uh, deposit uh, cup uh, or uh, cutlery system. And uh, in this team, we also have uh, volunteers and uh, uh, they, they are the ones uh, who, who collect the, the dishes and uh, give, give out as well. And uh, also there are this, there's this uh, green team who is uh, helping the audience uh, to decide how to sort their uh, rubbish. Uh, it is again uh, a position where it is good that uh, you speak different languages, but uh, also Estonian. And uh, then there is this uh, lifters team who is helping with all the uh, all the um, uh, all the bins. And uh, usually it's a small team with with a few few guys who do this uh, harder uh, job. Uh, but let's move forward now. Uh, so uh, um, the bonuses that uh, we are uh, uh, giving to the volunteers. Um, the volunteer will have a possibility to uh, attend the festival for free and also ask a friend or whoever uh, to come with uh, her or him. Uh, we also offer uh, team catering. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it takes place in our team uh, catering area. And um, already when you fill in the form, there's a question uh, asking whether you prefer uh, vegan food or you prefer the ordinary choice. So we already know before the festival uh, how, how many people uh, need uh, vegan food and how many people do not need that. So, um, and if uh, there is a need for accommodation, then uh, we can offer that as well. Uh, there are some places where there are already uh, beds and uh, sheets and so on, but uh, lots of volunteers will have to take their mattresses and sleeping bags with them. Uh, in order to have a have a place to stay. Um, so what else? We also provide a team shirt. Uh, you can see the picture uh, just next to here. Uh, so uh, and this team shirt is our it's like our team uniform. Whoever is working is asked uh, to wear the shirt that um, that makes you stand out uh, from from all the crowd and uh, whoever from the festival needs some uh, assistance can uh, knows that aha uh -huh, he's wearing this shirt so I can ask uh, ask him a question about the festival and uh, we also organize a thank you party for all the team uh, all the volunteers team leaders and so on and it takes place uh, one day after the festival when all the all the after um after after work has been uh, finished as well and it's always a, a nice uh, time to meet all the um, all the people uh, who, are, who are working for the festival and uh, and uh, it's always uh, great to see that uh, people have made uh, new friends and uh, it's a it's a quiet time to just to spend uh, time with your with their new mates and um, i listed some benefits of volunteering as well uh, i think uh, volunteering is a very very uh, uh, good opportunity to be part of organizing uh, whichever events. Um, so if you are interested in the, in the cultural uh, uh, 
uh, side, then uh, I think in Estonia it's uh, it's very how can I say it's quite easy <laughs> to become a volunteer, and um, and uh, the more experience you have, the the better uh, possibilities you have to apply for the for the next uh, position, and. Um, with the volunteers who are asking, uh, like some volunteers are already asking uh, in the forum that, um, for example, that in everyday life I work in a cafe, uh, but uh, during the festival I would like to do something completely different. So they they want uh, they want something uh, new. They want to learn something or to deal with uh, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, they want they want the change, uh, uh, so it, it it is different uh, from your everyday life. And uh, of course, it is uh, when you have a big team, you need uh, you need some social skills to kind of uh, survive in, in order to uh, to. Um, to get along with your uh, your team, to understand what you need to do, to offer some help to the others, and so on. Uh, so it's a great way to develop your. May, maybe you are shy in everyday life, but these four days you've got the opportunity to to push push yourself self a bit and maybe discover that it's it's not that bad at all. Um, and uh, I think volunteering, uh, it, uh, it looks good on, on your CV. Uh, if, um, if you're looking for a voluntary position or internship or applying for a job, uh, it's still something uh, to show that you, are, uh, mm, that you are interested in different things and uh, you are uh, you are uh, willing to commit with different pro uh, projects, uh, so so I am uh, checking that as well from the forums. Like uh, who's got more experience, then I know that he's more open-minded. He's uh, he's used to the festival, uh, like different festival uh, rhythms, and uh, and so on. And of course, uh, being a volunteer, it's uh, always a uh, uh, possibility to um, like one day to become a team leader or a team member in the long term. So um, I think it, uh, it it should not be under undervalued. So um, that's it. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you want, uh, I can show you the form as well. Uh, but if not, then um, then you can uh, see it yourself from the uh, villandifolk.ee website. Thank you, Celia. Well, sure, I mean, you, you can show it if, if, if you wish, wish to. Mm -hmm. Just a second. At least it's always good to know how, how the system works and mm -hmm. how it's in touch. Okay, so this is our festival website uh, this year, and this year the theme of our festival is Jura uh, uh, de which means the roots and the tops, uh, when we are talking about the trees. And uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, page that I'm showing you is in Estonian, uh, but uh, at least in my computer, I can change the language. So if you take the festival in Estonia, it's Saosa, and become a volunteer, uh, then this information is in Estonian. Uh, do you see it properly? Yeah. And if you want to translate it to English, then voila. And uh, from here, uh, you can open the form uh, can you can you see the form yes. and uh, we haven't uh, translated the form in english uh, because there um, the possibilities to to have uh, lots of foreign volunteers are 
unfortunately, they are not as wide as we would uh, hope. But, uh, but each year we have uh, some volunteers who's, uh, who don't uh, speak Estonian. But, and uh, we try to find like best positions uh, for them so they would have a good uh, festival experience as well. And for example, one, uh, one girl who attended uh, the festival as a volunteer on 2019, uh, now this year she's, she's coming back. Uh, she doesn't uh, live in Estonia anymore, but uh, she just wants to uh, to see the festival again. And uh, she she has already applied and asked if she could return. And uh, here is the form. It's a sim simple form with your uh, details here. Um, uh, over here, you need to mark what period you are free. And, um, and all these questions about your experiences as a volunteer and also what you do on a daily basis. And uh, we are also asking about um, like, uh, what's your relationship with uh, traditional music? Because in uh, some positions, for example, in a festival shop, you also need to sell uh, uh, CDs and people are asking about the artists. Uh, then uh, usually people who are uh, picking the first one, uh, like I'm a big fan of traditional music, then these people are mostly selected to be the, the shop assistants. And over here we got a little questionnaire about your uh, language uh, skills. And then, uh, then just uh, some information that we need to know about the catering, about the accommodation and uh, whether you have a driver's license or, or not. And, um, and in this last uh, uh, question, you can, you can write whatever you want to write. <laughs> uh, use this uh, field. Uh, yes, use this field because uh, sometimes people leave it uh, empty and uh, it's a good way to, to say what you want to say, but I, uh, but for example, I didn't ask it uh, beforehand. And also we need a photo of you as well. Um, we use it on our uh, cards, but also it, for me, it gives the person uh, kind of like a identity. When I look at your uh, registration sheet, then I see it with a picture. So I'm actually seeing a, a person, not just an anonymous uh, data. So pick a good photo as well. Thank you. If you have any questions, then I'm, I'm here to answer. Thank you, Celia. And I think it was very useful that you showed us how the registration form uh, works as well. Uh, and a good tip on, on just using the browser a translation function um, to get them more into English. Uh, and I also, uh, I appreciate that you talk, spoke about the benefits of volunteering in a more general sense as well. Like it very much concise what we try to uh, also usually say um, and, and yeah, build the CV. I fully agree with that. We've had different feedback how it has helped uh, people uh, in their further you know, career path or, or just life trajectory, what do you want to call it? Um, Christina, do we have any questions uh, from the chat? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, do you want to shortly describe what a day as a festival volunteer uh, looks like? Um, sorry, ask, ask it again, please. <laughs> uh, what a day for a volunteer looks like usually? Mm, I'm sorry, I didn't still understand the question. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, what does the regular day as a oh, regular day? Okay, yeah. um, uh, as I said before, uh, approximately six hours per day you are in a, in a working uh, rota, and uh, besides that time, you have your free time. Uh, but of course, um, in different teams, the rotas are made uh, on different bases. Uh, for example, uh, ticketing teams and some teams have uh, uh, divided the six hours 
For example, you have three hours in the morning, three hours in the evening, uh, because the six hours, uh, like with one go, it would be too much because the, there might be some intense uh, periods after what you would like to just um, have, a, uh, have a break. Uh, but in some teams, for example, the guards and the um, uh, parking arrangers, uh, they they work the six hours uh, like with one go, and after that you got your uh, rest of the hours uh, free. Um, but uh, basically, um, yes, I, I think uh, that's it. <laughs> if, if you want me to uh, specify something, then you can still ask. No, no, that's not necessary. Uh, but uh, someone in the chat is asking, uh, do you still have any COVID restrictions? Um, at the moment, uh, we don't, uh, we are not aware that we have. Uh, but of course, uh, no one knows what's uh, going to happen within the next uh, few months. But uh, myself, uh, I am very uh, hopeful that uh, today is the 1st of uh, June. Uh, I am hoping that in this uh, two summer months, the things uh, with uh, regards to COVID are getting uh, hopefully better, not worse, uh, because last year we were, I mean, last year at the same time, uh, we already knew about the summer uh, restrictions or at least that uh, something was coming. Uh, so, as we don't uh, know that at the moment, then we are hoping that if uh, some restrictions are coming, then they are not affecting uh, that much. Uh, thank you. And uh, someone is also asking that uh, when he knows some folk dances and uh, some folk music, does it also help? Yes, yes, of course. Um, I mean, obviously, we would like to have uh, lots of uh, folk music uh, fans within our team, because um, I mean, the, the team has got uh, its energy. So if you come to our festival and you are very interested in folk music, that's, uh, that's a big bonus. And I think uh, on your free time, you have lots of uh, opportunities to, uh, to practice and to, to get um, uh, to do what you like. And uh, it, it really suits with your interests. Uh, thank you. I think we don't have any more questions, but uh, thank you for the amazing presentation. Thank you. But I, but I would still just ask you uh, maybe two more questions. I mean, yeah. one because you, you know, you, you sort of evaluate these registration forms, uh, or we, you know, when people want to become a volunteer, mm -hmm. what is maybe the the main advice you can give, or what is the biggest mistake somebody can make in their volunteering form that they say something that immediately cancels them out, or, or what would be your one recommendation uh, that can be? It could be, you know, you can you can think of in case of the default, but also maybe you have some general advice. So, how one should present themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest mistake would uh, not send the form because then I wouldn't know that you are interested. Uh, even if you have some doubts, like if you can do or not, uh, of course, uh, um, things can change over the summer. But uh, then again, this last field I showed, this is your place to say that, that um, Mm, say something about your uh, hesitations or something, but uh, please do fill in the form because uh, uh, if you don't, then uh, there is no way that you can get to the team. But if you do fill it in and your things change in a way that you can attend the festival, then, uh, then it is uh, quite likely that you are picked uh, to the team. But uh, apart from that, uh, I think... Um, just uh, if you fill in the form, uh, please uh, think first what uh, what are the experiences or uh, or your skills that are uh, 
uh, useful to show on the form. You cannot uh, put there everything you have done in your whole life. So you just you, you still have to choose well, how, how do you want to present yourself. If it's, um, I mean, some of the fields are um, in a way they are tricky. They, they don't allow you to put endless uh, text there anyway. So they, they still force you to choose the relevant information. But um, I mean, I haven't seen very uh, uh, horrible forms in my life. Most of the people who are well, uh, like uh, applying, then they, they know that they want to become volunteers and they present themselves uh, very good. Okay, and my second quick question is, do you also have any off-season activities like side side festivals in the winter season? Or do you also look for volunteers besides the summer or not? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we do have, uh, like, uh, in the summertime, we have the festival, but from sem September to May, we also have a concert season in our uh, concert venue, which is called Estonian Traditional Music Center. Uh, throughout the year, we are not organizing that big events. Uh, we, ha we do have a harvest fest in the autumn time, but... Um, as it is much uh, smaller compared to the summer festival, then usually we are coping with our uh, local uh, helpers. But uh, of course, if uh, someone is interested and we have some um, uh, tasks uh, to offer, then uh, we no normally we do have uh, like few volunteers, I would say maximum eight people or something like that. Uh, and uh, this festival takes place in uh, uh, in October. Okay. Well, thank you, Celia, for introducing us to Villa Folk and, and speaking about the opportunities uh, and also even detail where people can apply. Uh, and wishing you all the best with the festival in, in two months. Yes, thank you very much. And now uh, I would like to welcome Victoria from Sudamethosoyus or Warmth of Hearts uh, in English. Uh, and again, Victoria, it's a pleasure to see you uh, again over year and a half or two years um, to be presenting your, your wonderful foundation and your activities. So please, uh, you are welcome to share your screen and, and, and speak more about this. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mart. Actually, um, I'm really very helpful for the um, Uringut Institute because uh, the last time that we participated, um, we had the four nice volunteers, uh, foreigners, who were almost for two years of the COVID, uh, teaching our kids um, English, Spanish, and French languages. And it was really amazing. So I'm really very thankful for that opportunity. Uh, and again, uh, we are here. Thank you for that. So, um, I can see that my colleague, um, Alan Putnik, will, is here also. Um, I will make my presentation and afterwards I will give the floor uh, to him to share his um, experience in um, our organization, Sudametasoyos. So, um, first of all, uh, we are in Estonia for um, a bit more than uh, nine years. Victoria, and sorry, we cannot see your slides. Oh, excuse me. Yes, sorry. Thank you very much. So I have to share it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that should be like this. Mm -hmm. And now like this. Uh, excuse me. It's okay. No worries. Okay. Can you see for the moment? Mm, we see it in the PowerPoint view, but not in the presentation view. Okay. I you see. can try to press, uh, when it's open, try to press F5. It helped with me. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I will try to do my best. So, you mean, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Strange. What about right now? Can you see? 
Unfortunately not, but maybe if you try uh, it's sharing the entire screen, not just the PowerPoint uh, with, when you click on the green arrow, that sometimes help. Mm -hmm. So we can try one more time. And if that doesn't work, then we would go as, as it is. Mm -hmm. Strangely, everything went well. Hmm. Okay, now? Yes, now it's perfect. Super. So, uh, yeah. The um, warm of hearts. We, uh, yeah. Uh, I will just uh, say a bit of history. For the we are in Estonia for the last um, uh, nine years, and everything started uh, in the eastern part of um, Estonia, uh, where our um, uh, founder Anna Rehema is uh, from. So uh, the first thing that uh, Anna started to do is helping the um, orphanage um, in uh, Silama, where uh, she was coming from. And for the um, almost um, nine years, we have a very good partnership with that uh, orphanage. Uh, as you can understand, uh, many kids are already um, uh, graduates, but um, we could see uh, the path from the um, little babies uh, till the um, uh, graduates. And we can see that our activity was uh, very super helpful for them. Um, I will go, uh, I will continue with uh, talking about that, but um, that's how we started our um, activity. But I also want to uh, talk a bit about our annual project that we are doing um, annually. As I mentioned that our very big uh, goal is uh, to um, um, educate, first of all, uh, kids who are really in need of that. Because as we all know, uh, kids are our future generation. So the way we educate them today, the way they will be tomorrow. So our big goal is to uh, um, show them that uh, there is, um, I'm talking about the of Orphanage kids uh, to show them that there is a life um, outside the orphanage as well, and it is beautiful with uh, lots of uh, creative um, moments uh, with lots of um, uh, beautiful, nice, um, very uh, good people around, so that they are not alone in uh, that house. Um, the um, we are also uh, trying to uh, open our borders for other activities. And uh, uh, for the last nine years, we are doing our charity concerts, uh, annual charity concerts uh, called Inkerports or, um, uh, yeah, Inkerports, where we are raising funds for a special uh, need. Uh, last uh, year, we were uh, helping uh, one school, which is specialized uh, for the uh, school for kids with disabilities to uh, uh, buy a um, blackboard, a special blackboard that uh, was very uh, useful for them. Uh, before that, we were trying to, um, and we helped the kid with the very rare uh, disease uh, uh, to find, uh, to raise funds uh, uh, to um, have the cure for his uh, rare disease. And still we are communicating and helping uh, the family. Um, as I mentioned that uh, we are trying to, um, uh, to make our activities wider. Uh, we uh, also uh, uh, try to help uh, parents uh, who have uh, kids with disabilities uh, and uh, also showing uh, parents that they are not alone. Uh, we have created um, the event which is called Beauty Day that uh, for uh, one day in the year, we are going to the, uh, we have cooperation with the, um, with the hospital, children hospital. One uh, day in the year, we are going over there and making uh, the beauty uh, day for moms. And actually they're very uh, happy about it because they have the chance to feel themselves as uh, not only as a mother, but as, um, uh, as a ladies. So they have the, um, have some rest, uh, have some manicure, uh, nice haircut, and etc. So um, it is showed that it is very helpful for them. Um, we also have in our um, uh, in our 
organization. We also have the volunteers who, uh, who help with the lawyer um, experience and uh, uh, give the lawyers uh, lawyer advices. Uh, and um, every person who is in need of that, he or she can uh, come and uh, get that um, advice. Um, yeah, what I was actually um, uh, going to talk about our ongoing uh, projects. Um, first of all, um, what was very uh, beautiful and uh, very um, amazing actually um, um, project that we went uh, through uh, last uh, uh, two weeks, sorry, two weeks ago was uh, a dream day for our graduates, uh, graduates uh, from the uh, um, orphanage. They are graduated not from, from the orphanage, orphanage, but from the school. So, um, as you can, uh, as you know, uh, that's the very big, um, great day for kids. And of course, uh, uh, graduates, uh, kids from the orphanage, they uh, cannot um, uh, have such a um, nice maybe dresses so we decided to um, make um, a big day for them so we organized the um, with the help of um, Kaubermeyer uh, we organized uh, them to Tallinn uh, they came they have chosen the beautiful um, dresses and uh, costumes and uh, uh, also spent a very uh, beautiful day in Tallinn with our volunteers doing some activities talking smiling having good food so we uh, are doing it also for the last uh, five years uh, every year, um, graduates are coming to Tallinn, and we are trying to make them feel very comfortable for uh, for them to have such good moments. And of course, they're almost the most beautiful graduates uh, uh, at school. Um, every day, uh, every year, we're also organizing the um, uh, Christmas uh, gift uh, events. Um, uh, we call it um, um, we call it um, Christmas dwarfs, as um, and uh, almost um, all people in Estonia, uh, not maybe not all people in Estonia, but majority of people in Estonia are involved in that uh, uh, nice event. Uh, um, so uh, we are uh, collecting um, uh, gifts uh, to kids uh, from uh, orphanage. Uh, kids uh, from um, socially unstable um, families, kids uh, from the HIV families, um, so uh, and etc. And this year we have collected uh, more than two hundred gifts for all kids, and it was amazing uh, because. Uh, we could feel that synergy of people who were just uh, uh, writing and calling and uh, packing and um, mm, and forwarding those uh, presents, uh, presents uh, for kids. And kids were so much um, happy about that. So uh, this action we are doing uh, also every year, but this time it was um, like a really great in numbers and in um, in the feeling that uh, everyone uh, um, felt. Um, as you know, the um, last uh, two years uh, were quite uh, difficult for all of us, and especially for those organizations who are um, working with um, uh, socially unsecured uh, families, especially HIV families. And uh, we uh, also try to help them every uh, um, on the monthly basis, like uh, collecting um, food, uh, collecting um, uh, clothes, um, collecting other uh, stuff for uh, for kids. And we were doing it for the last uh, two years, and we are very happy, and we can, and we can see that we are very successful in that. Um, and uh, yeah, and the mentor program. Actually, um, the mentor program is meant for the um, um, for the people who are willing to work with kids and the youngsters, um, educating them uh, in different um, spheres. Uh, 
uh, like I mentioned that uh, foreign students uh, uh, were uh, teaching kids uh, different languages. That's how kids understood that, um, mm, that there are different cultures, uh, that uh, they're not alone in their small orphanages, uh, that, um, that they can actually um, mm, feel very free with uh, people from different cultures. And it was very, really, it was very great. And um, regarding mentor programs, um, and I think here it is the part for that volunteering invitation. So um, if uh, you have uh, a wish to uh, participate, uh, in that mentor program, uh, please feel free to uh, write about uh, your uh, strength point, strong points. Uh, maybe you, I don't know, maybe you um, want to uh, teach kids how to play guitar or maybe teach um, Japanese language or s something uh, that you're very uh, strong um, in. And um, yeah, that's we can see that is really working and um, kids are turning uh, into a great uh, grown-ups after meeting people from um, uh, different cultures. Uh, yes, um, so there are some nice photos from the um, events that we went uh, through. As you can see, our activities are quite um, uh, different. Um, that's uh, just a few photos from that uh, dream day that you can see that the graduates are very happy um, trying uh, nice gowns and um, kids are also happy uh, uh, doing those activities. Um, yeah, I think that um, here is the, um, uh, the contacts that uh, you can find us on the Facebook. Uh, we also have, and I, it seems that I forgot to uh, put, uh, we also have the um, web page, uh, Pseudomethosaurus, and you also can write us uh, with all your questions. And um, if you have uh, that um, wish to, um, to be with us, then you will be very, very welcomed. Thank you. I think that I can uh, give uh, the floor to um, Alan uh, and uh, he will also have um, something to share with you. Um, I will be very happy. So I'm stop sharing my screen. Yes, hello, I'm Alan. And uh... Uh, I am volunteer in, uh, in this wonderful organization, and uh, so I, I was uh, I was more expecting uh, more like questions uh, about volunteering rather than uh, than I will extend my uh, uh, extend Victoria's uh, presentation. Yes, sure. I mean, we can uh, we have prepared questions for you. Okay. So, uh, why did you decide to volunteer? Uh, for Sudametosoyos? Uh, okay, that's um, the why questions are always uh, look easy, but uh, those are the most complicated questions. But uh, but I, I'm not a very typical volunteer. I'm more of a volunteer for a strategical view. Strategy uh, is my, my strength. And uh, I wanted to, uh, so the, the, first of all, Ida uh, or the northeastern part of Estonia is, uh, is uh, my priority in uh, charity and philanthropy. So that's, that's, that's something that I chose in my life because my, uh, my ancestors come from Narva. So uh, that's the first thing. The, the other thing is that, uh, uh, that it's always good to help someone through life. And, uh, and uh, volunteering gives you something that your job does not give you something that uh, that you can help uh, people and you can inspire them uh, to be better themselves so um, that's always um, I think I, I think for for everyone we, we all want to help someone 
but we have uh, different means and different uh, resources. And, uh, and I think that volunteering gives you something that you can, cannot get from anywhere. Does the volunteering experience give something back to your day-to-day -day job as well? Um, some skills or something like that? Yeah, it gives me a lot of uh, people skills, empathy. That, uh, that is, there's always a uh, shortage of empathy. And uh, it gives me humbleness to understand that, uh, that I'm very lucky that and helping others, I give them my experience. That, uh, and, uh, and also it, um, it gives me an opportunity to make someone else's life better. And uh, you know we have a group of international students in the audience today who are considering volunteering in, in Estonia in, in an organization or in a festival. What, what would you recommend to these students who are considering volunteering? Uh, I would recommend them to do that uh, and to choose something that is close to their heart, but uh, they must understand that volunteering is uh, like uh, building a startup or being a part of a great story. Because uh, in, the, in the end of life, I think people remember more volunteering and those stories that they, they saw people uh, that rather than their day-to-day -day job because uh, it gives passion, it gives you a lot of opportunities and you learn a lot. You learn a lot uh, how to work with people, how to, um, how to understand people uh, whom you, I, I mean, probably will never meet in life. And uh, that's, that's an opportunity that uh, I think everyone should take. And, uh, and it gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of experience. And that, that, that uh, if, you, if, if you know how to convert it into your future job, your future uh, works or businesses, that's, that's something that gives you a lot of uh, advantages in life. That's really nice. I mean, if this is, uh, I think this is the message that we, we always want to also convey uh, to the participants that it's um, it's one of the activities you can do during your studies in Estonia and after your studies as well. Um, maybe a question to both you and Victoria, and I also open the floor uh, for people to, to share their questions in chat. Um, maybe how, how can people join your team? So is there a concrete application deadline uh, or is it the rolling basis that whenever a person is interested, they can contact you? Um, you can, always, you can always contact us. Uh, Victoria shared uh, contacts. Uh, and we, we, we have uh, events in Idaviruma or Northeastern Estonia. And we have also events in, uh, in Tallinn. Is there a limit uh, or like a time period that you expect a volunteer to join? We had earlier today, Pop was speaking that you know, they are very flexible. They can have two weeks and, 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 and longer as well. What, what is your sort of minimum? time effort that the person needs to be willing to commit. Maybe Victoria, you can answer if you have something. Yeah, thank you. Actually, we don't have the limits. When you feel that you want to become and you want to participate, then you can contact. It's only about your own uh, feeling. And I think that's the most strongest feeling that uh, will stay with you. Okay, good. Um, Christina, do you have any questions to uh, Lena or Victoria? Uh, do you also have any events uh, outside from the Eastern Europe and Tallinn? Like, for example, we have some people from Tartu in here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have, uh, uh, for the moment, we are more uh, stressed on the uh, Tallinn or Harjuma and uh, Itaviroma. So you can definitely join us uh, either there or here, but we are very open for the partnership and we can find any activities everywhere. I would like to, I would like to add here that, uh, that the Northeastern part of Estonia is uh, somehow more complicated than uh, most of the parts of Estonia because of the history and uh, proximity to, to Russia. And our organization is committed to do hard things. Uh, and if, if you feel that you, you're somewhere elsewhere in, in, in Estonia, that uh, you really want to contribute and then you want to really leave a mark 
and do hard stuff, then uh, you just <laughs> come to join us. That's uh, that's 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 a very challenging, but uh, it's very re rewarding in the end of the day. I would put it this way. And uh, I would also ask uh, about the timeline of the most volunteers. Do they usually just come for the few events or are they participating in uh, long term? Like are, are they in your org organization for years or uh, for rather short periods? Mm, for example, I'm volunteering for the last nine years. And I also have uh, many friends who are volunteering for the last uh, nine years. Actually, it became our a way of life and we have formed a very good community. So you have the very good feeling of community that uh, people are, are sharing your values. And also Alan uh, has, uh, has been with us, I think, the last three years. And I don't think that he is willing to stop. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I am committed uh, for a long term because I have long term goals and uh, vision, and that's for at least 20, 25 years. So that's the timeline we're operating. Um, Victoria, you also mentioned that four, four students or four foreign students have been working with you um, since our last event. Um, and you mentioned the language learning they assisted there. Um, any other examples how they were involved in your activities? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mart. Um, uh, we have invited them for the uh, events that we organized in the orphanage. So they met uh, kids. They, first of all, they met kids whom they were teaching languages. And it was um, very surprising and a good feeling for the both. <laughs> um, also, we have um, we are constantly uh, doing some meetings for the volunteers. For them to share their, um, I don't know, maybe um, uh, happy things and sad things, uh, to um, uh, evaluate what we have been doing uh, for the last uh, few, um, for the last uh, period of time, and uh, trying to motivate them. So the volunteers were also coming to those uh, uh, events, and it was also a very good experience for them for the volunteers who are for a long time period with us uh, because um, as you could understand we uh, are uh, for the um, Estonian and Russian community so we really don't have uh, the um, and it's also the majority of for the Russian community we also we don't have the foreigners but when the foreigners are coming to to us we are very happy and we are trying to involve them so it's like this Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions, Christina? Uh, maybe we can uh, give uh, people in, in here a chance. Maybe someone wants to ask something with a microphone. So if yeah, somebody does, then you can indicate with the yellow raise your hand uh, reaction function. And we can give the word to you. Before people are, uh, are trying to uh, uh, to question, uh, I would like to invite uh, everyone who is interested in the communication with kids and youngsters to our nearest event on the 11th of June in uh, Silama. We will do the Talgu path, or how it's called. Let's do it. We will organize, we will uh, clean the territory, we will make the picnic, we will communicate, we will have fun, we will make the master classes. So we basically we are having fun, but we are educating uh, kids at the same time. So if is that also available on your website, the information of the event or uh, it will uh, come very uh, soon for the moment. No, but it will come soon. Thank you. But the 11th of June then? 11th, yes. Good, I mean, thank you for sharing that as well. I mean, it's, it's always nice to hear about such uh, possibilities. Um, I think there are no further questions, so I would just give you both uh, a, a last chance if you want to add anything regarding volunteering or, or about your own organization. Um, so, Alan, anything else you want to add uh, before we conclude? Uh, I think, uh... We've we've uh, we've covered uh, everything in a, in a brief short presentation. Good, Victoria. Do you want to add anything? 
uh, maybe motivation that if you volunteer, you will rule the world. Thank you. That's a, that's a beautiful message to, to end. And, and it was great having both of you here introducing both your organization, but then actually also bringing into perspective that you know you, you have uh, a long, long uh, history uh, and background as volunteers yourself. Um, and in the beginning of today's session, we had we had a poll uh, where we asked if people had prior volunteering experience and, and many, at least in Estonia, did not have. So it's good to have also these examples um, here with us. Um, and this actually leads me to our second poll to, to conclude today's session because, um, and I'm going to launch it now to see uh, how you react. So we've heard three different uh, organizations speak about their volunteering options. Uh, we are now curious to see um, what are your reactions uh, to that. So I'll just give you a few, um, yeah, a few seconds uh, to respond. I see some answers are coming in nicely. So here are the results. So uh, indeed, for some, they're even more eager to volunteer now, and for others, uh, they are now considering maybe if they were not considering it uh, before. Um, so to, to wrap up, I have two more slides with some additional information that could be relevant uh, for our listeners. So I will share my screen as well. Um, yeah. So first of all, I mean, I, I, uh, thanks again to all our speakers, to to Bob and Celia, Victoria and, and Alan, um, for you know introducing the organizations and, and volunteering opportunities. Um, on this slide on the bottom, you also have again the, the links to the organizations, and uh, as already you've you've seen them through the chat throughout the day, and then we will also send them to all all those who have registered uh, for the event today. But uh, you know, in short, I think. You, I hope you had a good glimpse of, of what volunteering is about and how it can take different forms. So uh, at Sudametosoyus, you can really make somebody stay better or life better by working with orphanage or, or with other target groups. Uh, in Billandi, you can you can help uh, run a successful large scale festival and listen to uh, beautiful folk music. And then at the Iliko uh, Islet, you can basically build a community and get your hands into the mud and and do whatever is needed uh, while enjoying the uh, idyllic Estonian summer. So different opportunities. Um, and in general, of course, a lot of nonprofit associations and organizations are looking for volunteers in Estonia. Um, the, so I would advise you to look at these uh, two, two first links that we have on this slide and that we also put into the chat, which uh, sort of, sort of um, collect various volunteering opportunities in Estonia. And, and then I would also encourage you just to write directly to organizations that you find that are interesting uh, or whose activities align uh, with, with your own interests. So often, often enough, uh, organizations don't publicly promote volunteering opportunities, but they are actually open for collaboration. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out to various Estonian organizations uh, if, if what they're doing um, is interesting for you. And um, yeah, this again, this was organized as a part of a larger project, uh, I mean, today's event. And uh, we would appreciate if you can also fill in a feedback survey. Uh, so it's just a few questions. It should take like one minute uh, to give your feedback on the event. So we would um, we would know take some lessons best lessons learned from today as well. And um, as we've had some of these events virtually before as well, then I would just like to bring your attention that the recordings of previous events are available on, on YouTube, and including the last two events on volunteering. Uh, so you can learn a bit more about other other organizations in Estonia that are looking for volunteers. Uh, and of course, there are some videos then that are about um, employment opportunities. Uh, so, so, you know, make use of these resources if you're thinking of what to do with your summer in Estonia or, um, you know, what to do maybe with your, with your career in Estonia in case you're one of those who are graduating um, this season. So uh, thanks again to all the speakers. Uh, thank you for our participants, uh, for your attention. 
um, for the students in, 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 in the audience, I wish you good luck with your final exams, your final thesis defenses, and, and you know, just uh, I hope you get to also enjoy uh, Estonian early summer. Um, and for all the organizations here, uh, good luck with the work you do. Uh, looking forward to also meet you again in the future and, and the best of luck. So thank you.